I hope so far you're following along and you've got your project up and running. What we're going to tackle today is adding in a few more events to allow us to actually control our object and our player in our game to be able to move them around at will. Right now they just move off in a direction and we have no control of that besides the code we've put in. So today we're going to actually tackle putting in some controls so that we can control our player. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So what we need are a few more events. Remember that events are registered by GameMaker when they have code inside of them and there are dozens of different events that we can have. All we have right now is this create event. The create event triggers one time and in it we have set our speed and our direction. So it goes, well right now it's gonna go to the left at a speed of 50. I'm gonna bring this speed down. We're gonna put in 2.5, so it's gonna bring it down significantly. And the direction, well, we can just leave that the way it is right now because we're gonna actually change the direction when we press a key. So let's go into the add event. And what we wanna do here is specifically we wanna have the key pressed event. So this event will trigger just one time when the key is registered being clicked. If we held it down, it doesn't do anything. If we release it, it doesn't do anything. There are events for those as well, key up and key down, but key pressed just triggers one time. The reason we wanna use key pressed in this case is we're gonna change the direction of our player when we press that key. But if we wanna be able to move quickly around, go left, right, up, down, super, super fast, we want it to only register when that key is pressed. If it was being registered the whole time that the key was held down, we would have an issue where we're going to the right and we press down and we might still have our finger on that right key as we're lifting it up. But because we have two fingers on the keys at the same time and we have an event that's trying to register both of them, it can only pick one and you may not know which one it's gonna be. So key pressed is what we want here. And if you're a computer gamer, you're probably familiar with the WASD keys, which are normal movement keys in a lot of games. So you can follow along with either the left, right, up and down, which is for the arrow keys on your keyboard, or you can go into letters down here and choose WASD. Just make sure that you're putting the correct code in the correct letter, otherwise it's not gonna work. Now GameMaker has a way of creating code for one key and then copying it over for other keys, but it involves using a function with some arguments and those are things we haven't touched on yet, so we're not gonna try and do that right now. That I will cover later on because it's extremely useful to be able to code your movement for one and then have the player be able to use it for another if that's what they're more comfortable with or you can rebind keys. Like in games, you've probably rebound keys before or you've seen it where you can just change what a key does in a game. That's something super useful. It's also something that you kind of add in later into the game. I'm just talking about it because those are all things that Game Maker can do and you might be familiar with if you play PC gaming or even console gaming now. They have uh, remappable keys and buttons on consoles, which is kind of cool. But all of that aside, let's go and we're gonna do the key pressed left. And this, I'm gonna put the description as move left. So that's pretty easy because the key press is left and we know we're moving left. Now recall that in our game, we have, well, apparently we have a lot of different players. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete several of these. To do that, down over here in the instance properties, we can actually select them. If you click on the first one, hold shift and move down, it will select everything in between that second one and the first one. Then you can press delete, which is the D-E-L key on your keyboard, or you can right click Oh no, you cannot right click on that. But if you have it selected over here, you can come in here. And I think my right click might be broken. What is going on here? Okay, it works over here. No, okay. So 
this is something new to me. And look at that. You learn something new every day. Uh, you, there's no right clicking on the objects in here, and there's no right clicking on the instance layer properties. So you will have to use the delete key. So D-E-L stands for delete. Then I'm gonna move the object player back into the middle of the room. This is, that's new to me. I, I've i never tried, I guess. This is, okay, it's fascinating. No right clicking on objects, good to know. You can double click and it will bring up a menu. Uh, but in this menu, you can't delete it, so the point still stands. Okay, player object in the room, just one player object. Go back to our workspace. I'm gonna press F12 and it minimizes all the windows so we can just focus on what we're writing right here. No, because we were just talking about in the room here, the direction is, if you're going to the right, it's zero. If you're going up, it's 90. If you're going to the left, it's 180. And if you're going down, it's 270. Remember, it's a circle around the player with direction starting at zero to the right and going up from there. So with that knowledge in mind, once again, if we wanna to go to the left, it is direction, because all we need to do is change the direction. The speed is set at a constant right now. Direction equals 180. This is how we move to the left, or at least we tell it to start moving in that direction. So now we have the left movement. If I come into the create event, and let's say we actually delete this direction line because we don't need it. By default, the direction is set at zero, so it's gonna move to the right. And if we press left on the keyboard, it'll change it to the left. So let's go ahead and run the game. And now we're moving to the right. I changed the speed so we can see it, and I'm gonna press left, and now we're moving to the left. Now nothing else works, and if you press left again, it doesn't change anything because we're already moving that way, but you can see that now we have some control of our player. So let's go ahead and add a few more events. Make sure they are key pressed. We're gonna add the key press right. I'm gonna add the key pressed up. And I'm gonna add the key pressed down. Now it opens new tabs in the object window for all of these events. So you can click on a tab to move between it, or you can double click on an event right here. Remember, if you don't like double clicking on it, you can actually change it to a single click. So if I went up to File, Preferences, and it's gonna be in the Object Editor. If I change this double click to a single click, then it actually changes it right here. And I kind of like that. I always thought the double click made more sense, but now that I'm looking at it, it makes a lot more sense to be a single click. So let's do that, okay. So I'm in the move left, now I'm gonna to go to the move up. And I'm just going down in the order that GameMaker put them up here. So we've got direction and we're setting it equal when we're going up, which is 90. So don't forget a semicolon, it ends your sentence and please be adding spaces so that it's very legible. If you send me your project and it is all wonky without spaces, well, I'm gonna have a few words with you, just so you know. But they'll be kind words. And we don't wanna forget the description of moving up. Now let's go to the right event and give it a description. Very useful description here as well. This might seem really redundant, but when we start adding more events like the step and the draw event, things that are not obvious what they're gonna be doing, having a useful description and comments inside is a lifesaver. So moving to the right, direction equals zero. And moving down, you should know this one, direction equals 270. So all we've done so far is added a few more events and set the direction to change when we press a key. So if we click play or we press F5 to run our game, we should now be able to press our keys and change our player. There we go. We now have control over our player. Now, the player is continuously moving. So depending on the kind of game we're making, you might want that, you might not. So let's set up a system where we can actually control our speed 
as well. So I'm going to go into the create event and I'm going to delete this speed line because we don't need it anymore. Instead, I'm going to go to the add event and on key pressed, I'm going to go to digits. If you have a number pad, so that's like over here on the right where you can actually have extra keys. You have the numbers, you have plus minus, numlock, <clears throat> you have an enter key and stuff over here. If you have a numpad, you can do that if you want for the keypad, but that's what that is. If you're on a laptop or you don't have a number pad, make sure you're on digits, which is what I'm going to use here. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the keypad event because you don't have a keypad. So I'm going to add a keypad event for two. And I'm going to give it a description called set speed. And in here, I'm going to make it set the speed equal to two. Speed equals two. I think you can see what I'm doing here. What we're going to set here is just add a few more key presses for the different speeds that we might want to allow. And then inside of our game, we can actually just have it set the speed when we press these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of adding an event like we could do, this is the description I want and this is the same formula that I want. So I'm going to right click on this event because right clicking on events works. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this event. Now when we do that, it brings up the context menu for adding a new event. And that's because in an object, you can't have two of the exact same events. Uh, if you did, you would just have more code in one of them. So instead, it prompts you to choose what this new event is and it will copy everything inside of the original event into the new one. So we're copying the event, but we have to change it to a new uh, specific event. So I'm gonna change it to key pressed digit. We'll set it to five. And then I'll go to click on five and I will set it to a speed of five. And then I'm gonna duplicate the event one more time and key pressed digit zero. And in this one, you can imagine that we're actually gonna set it to zero. So now we got three keys in here. We can set ourselves to stop moving, move medium speed and move fast speed. So I'm gonna press F5 and run this again. And now we don't move because our speed is at zero. So I'm going to press two. We start moving. I'm going to press five. Now we're moving a lot faster. And then I'm going to press zero. And we're done. Now we can control when we're moving. It's not exactly elegant. You probably actually want a system where when you move, like when you press a key, you start moving. That's one way to do it. This is just showing you another way of setting it up. Uh, in the next video, when we actually start doing a little more complex coding, not a lot, but when we start doing a little more coding, I will introduce you to some of your own variables and we're gonna set up a much better movement system here. This is just getting you introduced to events. Now I know we stuck with the key pressed event, but you added a lot of events into your object we got it working and you can now control the speed, not fine grain control, but we're getting there. Just starting really, really slow, making sure that you're comfortable. So if you ran into any errors on this one, well, they're probably because you didn't add the correct event. So if you did, you can go back into the error video, which is right before this, because I think it's going to cover everything that you could have run into on this video as well. So I'm not going to take too much time on that. But if you're all set and all good, then what we're going to do next is setting up a little more fine grain control and introduce you to custom user made variables where we can store our own data that we want and why we want to do that and how it is really, really useful. So I'll see you then. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.